Hello. Thank you for stumbling upon this video. This is episode three of my retro tat. And today we've got a special treat in my opinion. This is <laughs> This is the thing that started my obsession with collecting mid century modern stuff. Before then I just kind of had trinkets knocking about that I'd sort of would pick up every now and again and go, That's a nice thing and put it back down again and that was that. And then I bought this. I found this in a charity shop in Portsmouth for a, I think I gave four pounds for it. Um and it was then that I realised that these things can be had in phenomenal condition. I'm convinced this was never used. Uh, and that's when I really got bitten by the bug of seeing just what I could find that people were not willing to keep around anymore for small amounts of money. Things that aren't appreciated, in my opinion, like they should be for their design. Um, and here we are. So we've got two different models now. Uh, my folks very kindly bought me this one as a present um we're just going to go through it and it's kind of like a shootout i suppose we're just comparing the difference between the two really so we'll move this guy over to the side for a moment and uh yeah start with this one i'm just going to um just going to lift the camera slightly bit of a different setup due to the size of the items uh, i've had to put you on a tripod and it's a little bit awkward trying to tell if it's framed right so bear with me again still feeling this out so this is a Pefco High Speed. I have got the top covers for these. There's a picture of a lady on each one with a different hairstyle. Um, but these are how they're displayed in my cabinets in the house. And um, yeah, let's just dig in, shall we? So the bit of cursory research that I've done, um, these items were available at least as early as 1949 in white. Uh, probably, Probably slightly earlier than that. But this one is very definitely from the 1950s, uh, for a few reasons, obvious ones excluded. Uh, they changed the packaging in the, in the I believe, mid-50s. This packaging came around. Uh, before then, it was a much more plain uh, affair. It's kind of a brown box with a crest here. Still very much an on-display item. You take the lid off and it's just presented nicely. Uh, and the gold, again... That's a very 1950s thing for a sort of a luxury product that Pifco were obviously aiming for. That's why they put the effort into making these items as nice as they did. Um, it's a hairdryer, in case you can't tell already. But, yeah. So, I believe this to be from around the mid-50s. Um, this is model number 1050. And the register number, which I presume is a patent registration for the design maybe of the clamshell um that's eight five eight one five seven um yeah so let's let's dig in i'm not convinced this one was ever used um when i first got it there was a very very scabby old elastic band around it which broke as soon as i took it out of the box unfortunately i felt a bit bad about that but what can you do if, if it's not been used it's been sitting there waiting to be used for 60 years so Pefco hair dryer. Lovely, nice dark Bakelite nose cone on there to keep your fingers out of the heating elements. Pretty substantial heating element in there for, for the size. And I take it this uses the Venturi effect, this massive motor on the back. I don't know if you can see the pressed tin fan just inside the grill there. That All of that air movement condenses down where it's forced past the heating elements. This is, this is significant. I'd say that's probably half the half the diameter that this is. So that probably gives you your airspeed. And then the switch gear is beautiful. Nice, chunky. Uh, so you've got a hot and a cold. The, the, the temperature selector is quite a bit more easy going. It's a bit smoother. Apologies for the state of my hands. I've been sorting out my workshop today. I had a rare day off. Yeah. Um... And then the on-off switch is a little more decisive, which would make sense. I suppose you don't want the on-off switch sitting in some weird neutral position. Um, the first thing that comes across on this is the weight. And obviously, I know a lot of sort of personal hygiene stuff nowadays is they try and make it as light and sleek as possible. But this is from a time when 
you would gauge something's build quality on how heavy it was, and this is definitely heavy. Obviously, no chance of a brushless motor in here or anything like that. Um, very stout. Doesn't feel plasticky at all. There's no, there's no creakiness, no give. Nothing feels brittle. You don't feel like... I've got hammers that <laughs> that feel less stout than this. Um, and what's especially awesome is, yet again, it's our friend the bayonet fitting. Um, so, lovely pink mains cable to match, because of course it matches. And what, just, they don't do stuff like this anymore, right? This, <laughs> the strain relief for the power cable is the exact same colour as the switch gear. If something was going to be a different colour, it still had to match. Um, the light's not amazing in here, but I don't know if you can tell, because the switch gear looks a lot more red, but that's got a red hue to it as well. So <clears throat> they actually seem to have thought that out too. I am, unfortunately, for some of you, and this is maybe where I see the view time dip, um, I'm not going to be taking these apart. They're just too lovely, and I don't want to break them. I'll tell you what I am going to do, though. I don't think this has ever been used. I would very much like to see if this still works. I don't know about you guys. So shall we? Why not? Let's let's go for it. I'm going to disconnect that poor light bulb. One of these days, this light bulb's not going to be able to go back in here. It's just going to be so worn out. Okay, we're connected. Nothing's on fire yet. That's good. So we're on cold at the moment. We'll start things out gently. We'll just turn it on on cold. So we're not trying to get it to switch on and have the heating element kick on. There we go. Oh. Wow. Okay. That didn't even sound like it was sticky. Okay, well... Okay, let's go for... I'll turn it on. You might not be able to hear me. I don't know how this is going to come out, but we'll turn it on, and then I'll stick the heat on. We'll see how hot it is. Straight away. Immediately. Oh, that smell. smells awesome smells like old dust which is a smell anybody who's into vintage stuff always looks for whenever they open a box of any description with a with an item in it that they're not sure has been ever been used that's been sitting for a long time that got hot straight away um wasn't like crazy hot um i reckon if you gave it time probably be uncomfortably hot the speed that that heating element heated up to Heated up at, sorry. Um, yeah, I would I would say that's very probably never been used and it was still ready, willing and able the second I flicked the switch. So I'm not being brutal with this. I'm trying to follow the contours of how it was originally folded. But all things considered, I, I'm not sure I'm too worried about using that, actually. I think, um, I think we're all set. I'm very impressed. I, <laughs> I was expecting some hesitation or for it to have to free itself off and gradually speed up, but that just... That's what I mean. This is this is the whole point of this channel. They don't build things like that anymore. I'm not going to be able to get this in the box now when I'm talking to you guys, am I? I'll tell you what, I'm going to pop this over here so that you're not going to watch a moron struggle with packaging. Let's just pop that down. I'm pretty impressed with that. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Um, for that to have sat I mean I've owned that at least 5 years there's no way they tested it in the charity shop it had no pat testing stickers I doubt they'd have been able to pat test it because it's got a bayonet fitting um, fantastic I can see that getting used in the future now and if you like hair dryers let me know because I've got something very very special up in the house that you guys will particularly like Right, round two. I'm sorry if this seems a bit rushed. Um, there's really not much to say about them other than what you can see. So, 
just trying to kind of let you guys appreciate it, do an explanation and then move on so you don't feel that I'm just waffling on at you. Now this one was a little bit harder to pin down because they did this particular hairdryer and this is the one that many of you will probably recognise if you've searched this. They made this hairdryer for a very long time. Um, from the late 50s at least through to the 70s and there's a lot of different packaging. Annoyingly, obviously, as I said to you before, they started using this style, obviously got the zigzag pattern, whereas the other one was the swirls, but same sort of thing. Um, in the 70s, these were still around. Um, some of them came with a stand, some of them came with a, like a bag, I think, that went over your head. Uh, it's, it's hard to explain that one actually it's like a big diaphragm that you kind of put over the top of your hairstyle and the bag would inflate and just fill it with warm air which would set your hair rather than drying it um, yeah and all manner of other stuff probably a hoover and a swiss army knife and a multimeter and probably a jack for your car they, they used to really like accessorising this one's almost definitely been used um, there's a little bit of dust and things around the intake which says to me the motor's been drawing air in. I don't mind. Um, but I did a little bit of looking around, because this comes with our, our lovely uh, instruction card, come brochure, come advert, come guarantee on this one. And the entry form, I won't give too much away, the entry form specifies 196. So which year in the 1960s did you buy this item? So this one was at least for sale in the 1960s. May have been bought later on, obviously, but this was intended for sale in the 1960s. So generally, if they're going to do that with the instruction card, that says to me at least the mid-60s, so they've got a few years before they have to print any more of these because printing wasn't cheap, especially that gold. I mean, that's just lovely. Um, maybe even the early 60s. So let's let's dig into this first. So this is a princess. That other one was a Pifco High Speed, um, but they quite often get called a princess as well because the princess was the most famous make of Pifco hairdryer. So yeah, guarantee and instruction card. I don't know what instructions you would really need for a hairdryer. I wouldn't try not to get your hair stuck in it, but even that, it's like a it's like a Willy Wonka golden ticket. It just feels ex very expensive. Like the, this gold here shimmers. It feels like it was a far more expensive item than it actually was. Should we read this? Let's let's just quickly read this. I'm not going to keep you guys for too long. Installation: Pifco Princess Hairdryer Model Number 1060. There we go. Uh, is supplied for operation on AC main supply 220 to 240 volts. A special model is available for 100. 100 and 125 volt supply. I'd be interested to see the differences there. Probably just a big beefy transformer on one of them. I'm not sure. Before connecting, ensure that your dryer is of the correct voltage for your mains. The, the hair dryer is fitted with two core flex. Oh, okay. Oh, of course. It doesn't need an earth because it's plastic body. Well, baker like body. So it won't need an earth. Uh, two core flex as complete insulation is provided by the plastic casing. There we go. Oh, so they say plastic, but again, plastic was a buzzword. This, it feels like Bakelite. It doesn't feel like plastic, and it's got a granular thing on the go. So, anybody's guess. They're saying plastic, but plastic was a was a future material, obviously at the time. So, um, anyway. Three pin plug is used. Okay, so it tells you how to wire a plug, which you don't get on modern appliances, obviously. You're not allowed to do that now. Modern stuff all comes with a moulded plug, and you are not allowed to touch it at all. Um, fuse plug is used. The fuse fit, it should be no, no, no greater than 2 amp. Okay, so I'm anticipating this being a little bit less pokey than the high speed. But then again, it depends on the heating element, I suppose. Two fingertip switches are fitted on the body of the dryer. The first marked on and off switches on the electric current. The detail they used to go into explaining this stuff. The second marked hot and cold provides an immediate flow of either cold or warm air as desired. 
Uh, and if the again, if the high speed's anything to go on, they mean that. Uh, the Pivco Princess hairdryer is fitted with an automatic thermal cutout, which operates in the event of overheating, such as could occur if the flow of air was restricted along the hose or at the inlet of the hood itself. That says to me that this manual was designed for... It, it was like a fit-all, so the hood itself bit would have been like an optional extra, maybe. Um... Anyway, the cutout resets itself automatically and provided that the cause of air restriction is removed, no further action is necessary. Should the cutout operate frequently, switch the heat off and check that the air is flowing through the dryer correctly and there's no obstruction at the air intake grill of the hairdryer. When used in conjunction with the ho hose and hood... Oh, I should point out these... Also, you could buy these with a stand for what I presume they're referring to here. When used in conjunction with the hose and hood, ensure that the hair is so placed that incoming air can freely circulate. In other words, don't block up the inlet. Avoid sharp bends or kinking of the hood at the air entry union. Do you know what? I'm going to have to go look in now, I think, for one of those ho one of those hoods. Maintenance. No radio or TV interference is caused by the motor. Does anybody else remember that? My mum used to have a hoover that used to constantly mess up the TV anytime she was near it. Same sort of thing. Crazy. Which is latest in design and reliability. <laughs> I bet it was. I grew up in the 90s and our Hoover still used to jack a telly right up. Amazing. With self-aligning and self-lubricating bearings, making attention unnecessary. Okay. I wonder if they went for like an oil light, maybe. On no account, insert oil yourself. You had to tell people not to maintain their stuff back then. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, but if after a long period of use you consider lubrication may be necessary, consult your supplier. Guarantee out, uh, guarantee conditions? See how Pifco were planning on worming their way out of the guarantee then? I doubt very much that they did. The appliance is guaranteed against faulty workmanship or defective material for a period of 12 months from the date of purchase, providing the appliance is used on AC mains within the voltage range indicated on the handle and in accordance with the above directions. The appliance has not been dismantled or interfered with in any way or damaged through misuse. I'd be interested to know how they were able to tangibly figure out if you'd had it apart because the screws aren't aligned in any way, shape or form. And I can't. there's no warranty seal of any description. Um, under this guarantee, the, under, the company undertakes to repair or replace at our option, free of charge, any parts found to be defective. Guarantee cards are not acknowledged, but your name will be registered on our files, and we ask that you fill in the details on the attached card and return it within 14 days. So this, uh, I don't think if this goes bang when we turn it on in a minute, that Pifco are going to honour that. Because <laughs> nobody filled the card out, That's that's why. I think it's been a bit more than 14 days since this was purchased. What do we think? Pifco Limited, Watling Street, Manchester. And that is where they were based for a good long time. She's getting the most from her Pifco hairdryer. Yeah, there we go. There's all the all the extra stuff. Like crazy. I say crazy. Beautiful. Almost a... Uh, I don't know. I'd have to ask my wife what that would be. Like Voya, maybe? Vla, 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 I don't know how you pronounce that. The stuff neck curtains is made of. <laughs> and there's the hose with that press on nozzle. I would imagine that would have been a very sort of early, kind of a butylene nozzle that's stretched to make a seal. And then there's your stand, which explains why I've always wondered why this handle's shaped like that. It's so that it can fit nicely into that stand. There we go. These accessories dry hair even faster and more easily. Adjustable stand. See, that was serial number 1061. They really did make this easy. And 1064 was for the princess hood. Beautifully designed in matching plastic, holds dryer firmly and directs the flow of air to the angle desired. Ask for number 1061, all plastic stand. With extended flexible hose. Maybe it is plastic then. With extended flexible hose for really effortless hair drying, the hood fits comfortably on the head with elastic grips, circulating hot or cold air through the whole of the hair, leaving both hands free. Complete with comb attachment, which when attached to the hose allows the air to blow through the locks as the air is combed. Oh my god, we need to find one of those. We're going to have to find one of those, guys. This will return when I have found all this stuff. I need to get my daughter to uh, to test. She likes 
<laughs> she likes playing with the hair dryers. She likes playing with the hair dryer I'm going to do in probably the next but one video. Okay, so that's the brochure anyway. Sorry, I took my time there because I just... The literature is like a window into that that period of time. It's so normal and so boring that when you see how different things were back then just on something as tedious as a, as a brochure or a, an instruction leaflet, yeah, you just realise how much times have changed. So, again, beautifully presented. Um, yeah, this this is has been used, I believe. See, this got ah, it's got an elastic band around it as well, and the old mark of safety, British standards tag, British Electrical Approval Board. Lovely, that's a cool little feature. Okay, so we got a three pin plug on this one. Now remember the the three pin plug wouldn't have been earthed. Let's just see. I, before I plug this in, I want to check the wiring job because I've never actually again I haven't turned this on. Um, this is going to take two ticks, but I'd rather that than short the hair dryer out, cause some damage. It takes two minutes to just give a quick cursory glance. There we go. Red and black. It's the old red and black wiring code again. Very old. Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. There's a 13 amp fuse in there. I'm not too happy about. Have I got some fives? Okay, we'll be quick. I'm not happy about that 13 amp fuse. I must admit. Right, I'll change that. Lovely uh, fibrous cable retention here. That'd be plastic nowadays. This is very, uh, very stubborn. Almost. It's so. It's, it feels like the. Um, it feels like a socket box. Very. You get the impression it's very brittle, but very strong. There comes a point where it decides it's going to let go, and then it just shatters. You know. Right. I'm not. I'm. I'm not going to go crazy with this because I really don't like the fact there's a 13 amp fuse in that. But again, somebody would have gone down to their local hardware store and bought a 13 amp plug. Empire, 13 amp, 250 volt. So yeah, somebody would have gone down and bought this from their hardware store and it probably would have come with a 13 amp fuse and they just went, well it works, that's fine. <laughs> Even though that's massively, massively above the 2 amp recommended amount. I'd expect to see a 3 amp or a 5 amp fuse in that, I must admit. Right. Okay. So Feels a little bit crunchy. There's no no strain relief on this one. That's interesting. And this cord feels like it's maybe it does feel like it might be PVC. Certainly doesn't feel the same sort of quality as the as the high speed. I could maybe have had the maybe had the mains cable replaced at some point. I don't know. Right, let's go for it. So I take it this black switch is on off. And the red switch is for heat. I haven't given you guys a proper look at this, have I? Sorry. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. So a lot more sparse in its design. It just says Pifco on it. There's nothing... There's your British standards, the kite mark on the back. Number 1060. Voltage information again. Patent applied. Not approved, even after all this time. Because the earlier ones, they came in pink or blue. This is white. Very strange. Little bit of damage there. Just it's more like a hairline crack through the plastic. That's, again, but it's wearing its age well, I think. I love the fact that this whole thing is white, and then there's just this brilliant deep red. When was the last time you saw any plastic that color? And you can see the heating element array in there. Oh, I, where am I? Sorry, I can put I can put the light back in now. I was holding fire on that. I'm sorry. I was holding fire on that because I wasn't sure what plug was on the end of this. Yeah, look at how red that is. And there's the there's your heater assembly inside. Right. In for a penny, in for a pound. Let's go for it, shall we? Oh, way quieter. Way quieter than the high speed. Okay. Blowing nice cold air. Let's flip the heat on. 
straight away. There we go. That's hot. Getting hotter. Getting hotter. Getting hotter. Very hot. All right. Yeah. It's just started to get a chill in here, so that's actually quite welcome. Yeah. Pretty impressed. There are modern hair dryers. My my wife's current hair dryer is nowhere near that quite. I'm just bring my volume down here. Like I'm just talking it like that's that's a keeping my voice down because I don't want to wake somebody up level of volume and I think you would imagine you could probably still hear me that is really quite impressive switch back to cold see how quickly it cools down instantly there we go that's cold well, they weren't kidding they weren't kidding when they said immediate hot or cold air. This has definitely been used. Like I say, there's some there's some rattling in the switch gear. Hmm. Maybe it has been a part at some point in its life. I don't know. People used to fix their stuff. What can I say? You know, people would take things apart and fix them. And I, I still try to do that now. It's a lot harder to do nowadays when everything is designed that you so much as look at it funny with a screwdriver and it explodes into a million pieces and then you have to go and tell the guy behind the counter that you tried to fix it and now you have to buy a new one because they won't honour any sort of warranty but I keep going the wrong end of the cable I hope this has been a little bit less fluffy than the other videos I watched them back before I made this one and I felt that I was just sort of rambling a little bit so hopefully this has been a little bit more watchable and enjoyable um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to pop this away. These guys are going to go pry to place in my cabinet. That is another old elastic band that's just let go. Typical. Never mind. So that goes. Come on. Don't let me down like your friend did. Let's just go back in the box, shall we? Right. Okay, we're good. Oh, we're good. That was a lot easier than the other one goes in like that and off back up into the cabinet really should take a photo of the cabinet for the channel and make a nice banner I think who knows okay so <laughs> apologies for the packaging but this has been my retro tap thank you very much for watching uh, what are we going to do next week I feel like this should be a weekly thing what are we going to do next week Hmm. Okay, here's an idea. You guys, all three of you <laughs> that, that watch this, let me know. What would you rather see next week? Another personal, we can call this personal hygiene product, hair dryer, cosmetic product, whatever. Something like this, or an old tool, or a gadget, or shot glasses. I think shot glasses. Let me know what you guys think, but I think shot glasses. It will be a short video, but it will be a very retro-tastic, awesome video. Let me know. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.